This is the Weather Extreme video for Friday the 10th of February. James Spann here. And by golly, this just might be the coldest air so far this season coming in here this weekend. Let's get in there and talk about it. Here's a look at the water vapor satellite view across the nation. With the uh, front, you can see the uh, Arctic front is approaching Kansas City this morning. And uh, down below that, we've got that disturbance coming out of Texas producing some uh, light rain. In fact, there's a look at the uh, radar out of Jackson this morning at 5.03. It's uh, raining in Jackson. A little light rain down around Macomb and Hattiesburg. And then there could be some light rain in spots later today and tonight. But obviously, moisture is very limited and amounts will be very light. This morning, we're mostly in the 30s. The cold spot, Haleyville, they're below freezing at 30. Most folks are in the mid to upper 30s. Birmingham at 37. But, ooh, around the nation, I see some minus 10s up there on the Canadian border. And there is an extreme cold warning up there. Parts of Minnesota, North Dakota. North of here, some snow issues, a winter weather advisory. Parts of Kentucky, Ohio, West Virginia. It's like a winter storm watch up around Snowshoe, West Virginia there. There's the rain for the next five days, valid through uh, Tuesday evening. So this takes into account the showers we have uh, this evening or the light rain, and then also the showers we have Monday night and Tuesday of next week. And this is suggesting amounts of about uh, one-half inch to maybe three-quarters of an inch here. And most of that would be Monday night and Tuesday of next week. This thing tonight or this evening amounts probably a tenth of an inch or less. And snow fans... If you're looking for a snow, that's the chance of accumulating snow greater than one inch through tomorrow morning at uh, 6 o'clock local time. And obviously the bigger numbers are well to the north. We won't have any accumulating snow here, but flurries, eh, maybe. We'll check the uh, latest GFS. This is the 06 c run at noon today. You can see the southern energy coming through, northern energy coming through. It'll be phasing up, dumping some cold air down the pipe. Uh, there's the surface chart at noon today. And let's go to the RPM. This is uh, 7 o'clock this evening. And, boy, it's not very bullish on rain. Got some convection down there in the Gulf. And we are going to mention some scattered light rain this afternoon and tonight. But, obviously, with that look, not much. Then tomorrow morning at 6 o'clock, ooh, yeah, how about some snow flurries? And, again, I think I-59 is a good line for that. And, obviously, it's no big deal. It would be very light, and it's probably going to be early. Most people sleep through it. The big story is the cold, and then by noon, it's all gone, and the sky becomes sunny. There's the uh, GFS tomorrow at noon, and man, look at the thickness values coming down. Wow. That's a 1,040 millibar high, the 540 line down now below Montgomery, and both the GFS and the NAM are printing a high of 40 tomorrow. And to make matters worse, that wind out of the north will be uh, going along at 15 to 25 miles an hour. That's going to keep that wind chill index near freezing all day despite a sunny sky. Woo, goodness. Uh, Sunday, the uh, models, again, have come down. The, the GFS is showing 19 Sunday morning. The NAM is at 20, and despite a, a day of maximum sunshine, the high will be only in the low and mid-40s. It'll be a cold day, but not as windy on Sunday. All right, Monday, we start to warm up. Now, Monday morning will be cold. We'll be well below freezing. We should reach the low 50s Monday afternoon. Rain off to the west. Here's Monday night at midnight. Rain moves in. We think it's all going to be rain, no ice or snow issues. And then Tuesday, showers likely during the morning, maybe tapering off by midday or early afternoon if this is right. And again, this looks like a deal with maybe one half inch of rain, something like that. All right, Wednesday of next week, we are mild and dry. We're back in the 60s. Now, these cold snaps are short-lived, you know, the way the pattern is setting up. And then uh, Thursday of next week, a 1,012 millibar low near Cape Girardeau, Missouri, with a band of showers and maybe some thunder coming in here. This run, not as bullish on really strong to severe storms as other runs we've seen. It's just too early to you know determine. We'll look at the European on Thursday. This is Thursday evening at 6 o'clock local time next week, and it's got more of a convection type set up there in the Gulf, and that would not suggest any severe weather with no big surface low north of us if this is right. So, again, it's just too early to call, but... We'll clearly mention a chance of showers and storms on Thursday of next week. And then Friday, that's on by, and we start to dry out. We'll check the end of the forecast on the 25th of the month. Oh, boy, it's a big old trough out west. But look at that ridging here. There's no cold air with that look for us. That's mild. There's the NAO, strongly positive. And you can see what it's doing, and, you know, it kind of takes a little dip negative, and then it goes right back up to the positive side, so... 
Again, I just don't think any big spike downward is going to come this month. If it happens, it'll be in that wild month of March. I just still think the door is open for some March mischief. March is always a wild month. We'll see. That's it for the Weather Extreme video today. We'll have notes on the blog. Next video here by 3.30 or so today. And if you live around here, we invite you to watch us on television this evening, ABC 3340 in Birmingham at 4, 5, 6, and 10. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, and God bless. The first thing you've got to understand, you cannot rely on an outdoor siren. You cannot hear those inside a home, a building, a church. It won't work. You've got to get something inside your house. That's a weather radio or maybe a smartphone app. We work with a company that's developed a wonderful weather radio app for Android phones and iPhones. It knows where you are, and if you're in a tornado warning polygon, you get the warning. And if you're not, you don't. It's an effective device, and it's a great way to be sure you get the warning.